coral reefs have existed for more than 100 million years. 25 years ago, coral reefs flourished around tropical islands, and these colorful reefs were teeming with large fish and shellfish. Since then, there has been a tragic change. Uh, most people don't realize that coral reefs are very seriously threatened, that we've lost about 15-20% of the world's reefs in the last uh, 20 years or so. In California, a similar decline has occurred on the rocky reefs. Abalone were once so common you could pick them off the rocks along the shore. Now they are almost extinct in southern waters. Blue sharks and many other fish have been reduced in abundance and size. Are we really willing to accept a world where children will not be able to enjoy the beauty of the oceans and reefs as we have? Thankfully, the solutions to these serious problems facing our oceans and reefs are surprisingly simple. First, it's important to understand what has happened and why. Growing human populations, international trade, and global climate change have placed increasing stresses on our oceans, reefs, and the organisms living there. Because the dramatic changes to reefs and oceans have occurred under the water, most people have not noticed. Raising public awareness about the critical nature of these major ecosystem changes is an important first step. ReefCheck is a nonprofit organization working in over 90 countries and territories around the world to reverse this downward spiral by raising public awareness, getting local people involved in citizen science to track changes in the marine environment, and to help implement real solutions and bring our oceans and reefs back to a healthy condition. Our strategy is to use immersion learning. Llevándolas a bucear, ¿no? Porque un amigo dijo, este, ¿cómo puedes cuidar algo si no lo conoces? ¿no? Entonces, si ellos van y ven, oh, qué animales, peces, corales, delfines, ballenas. O oh, entonces quiero cuidarlo, ¿no? Porque lo conozco. Throughout the world, we work with elementary kids to adults and give them a chance to participate in learning about the values of reefs and threats to their health. What happens next is that many of these people become activists. From Mexico to Indonesia, our teams of reef check divers and supporters are enthusiastic about their work to help save reefs. Muy buena organización, la verdad es genial que estén este, tratando de conservar los arrecifes de coral. Todo excelente. ReefCheck also works to find economic solutions that allow local people to make a better living from protecting the reefs. Con el conocimiento que he cogido de, de ReefCheck, que veo que hay mejoría y hay más producción en todo aspecto, hay más producción, porque hay más producción de dinero y más producción de peces. For example, in the Dominican Republic, ReefCheck helped to establish a kayak and dive business for fishermen displaced by the establishment of La Caleta Marine Park. Now, the fishermen are the strongest supporters of reef conservation. California has marine protected areas, which allow rocky reef ecosystems to return to their natural state. ReefCheck helps to track and monitor the progress of these protected areas. But we need your help. Working together, we can and will bring back the reefs. Welcome to ReefCheck, a global coral reef monitoring program utilizing volunteer teams all over the world to discover the status of coral reefs on a global scale. ReefCheck surveys are conducted in over 60 countries throughout the tropics, providing a snapshot of coral reef health. Coral reefs are among the most threatened of all the world's ecosystems. Overfishing, blasts, and poison fishing, sedimentation, sewage, and pollution as well as boating damage, continue to threaten and degrade coral reefs. 
Reef Check is a solution to this crisis. By participating in a Reef Check, you are contributing valuable data to scientists, managers, and regulators around the world who are significantly improving our ability to manage and protect coral reef resources. You, our Reef Check volunteers, are the core of our program, and we thank you for donating your time and energy for the benefit of the ocean. Hi, I'm Craig Schumann, your Reef Check instructor, and I'd like to thank you for choosing to be part of our worldwide effort to save coral reefs. Today, I'm going to give you some helpful tips on how to best perform the Reef Check survey. Let's go down to the beach where we can get started. Behind me is a team of Reef Check volunteers preparing to do their land training. Hi hey guys, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm outstanding. I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. All right. While the team prepares the equipment for their training, I'm going to take you through the six basic steps of Reef Check. The first step is preparation. Then, site description and transect deployment, fish survey, invertebrate survey, substrate survey, finally, wrap-up, data collection, and analysis. Today, we will go through these six basic steps of a survey on land to give you an idea of what will happen in the water. New Reef Check volunteers should always have a land training with a team leader before entering the water. The first steps in a Reef Check survey are to prepare the dive and survey equipment, select your team, and choose the location for the survey. Let's go over the equipment you should obtain to perform this procedure. The first piece of gear you'll need is a transect line, a very long measuring tape. The transect line is used to define the size and location of your survey area. We recommend that you use a single 100 meter long fiberglass measuring tape because these can be deployed in one go and have winding handles that are easy to use underwater. Alternatively, you can easily make your own transect from quarter inch rope marked at half meter intervals with tape, cable ties, or wire. For rope transects, it is useful to use a different colored mark at five meter intervals. Remember that plastic rope floats and may require lead weights to keep it on the bottom. If you can't find a 100 meter long transect, feel free to use several shorter transects, such as 420 meter or 250 meter transect lines. Each transect line should have a quarter inch elastic bungee cord loop or string at each end so that it can be attached to the bottom. The next item on your list is underwater riding material. Everyone has their own favorite method of riding underwater, so feel free to choose the one that feels most comfortable for you. We recommend riding on pre-printed slates or underwater paper using the data sheet as a template. The advantage of slates is that they are easy to hold on to, but the disadvantage is that you will need several and will also need to photocopy them to create a permanent file. The advantage of paper is that you have a permanent record, and the disadvantage is that in rough seas, the paper can get washed away. Duct tape can be used for a more durable attachment. A hands-free version of slate or paper holder can be made from a section of six inch PVC pipe fitted with an internal triangle of quarter inch bungee cord. The pipe can be slipped over the forearm with a bungee cord holding the pipe in place. And then data is recorded on paper held in place with elastic bands. Remember, you will need one slate or clipboard for the site description sheet, as well as one for each volunteer doing the underwater surveys. To write underwater, we recommend either using short golf pencils because they are extremely strong or plastic pencils with multiple tips that slide up inside the tube. Standard pencils tend to get waterlogged quickly and break. Tie and duct tape the pencils onto string tied to the slates or clipboard, and always remember to bring lots of extra pencils. The next simple piece of equipment you'll need is a plumb line. This is used to help remove diver bias from the substrate survey. The plumb line is made of a small lead fishing weight or steel nut, approximately five millimeters in diameter, tied onto a fine string about two meters long. The small weights should be heavy enough to sink rapidly, but not so heavy that they damage any corals they're dropped on. Another useful piece of gear is a measuring stick, two and a half meters long. Used for measure two and a half meters on either side of the transect line that defines the belt transect used for the fish and invertebrate surveys. A half inch thick PVC pipe works well because it is light and easy to carry. Drilling holes in the pipe makes it easier to swim with and less buoyant. 
Other required equipment includes marker buoys used to mark each end of the transect. Each team will need at least two, and empty plastic bottles tied with a fishing line to weight on the other end work well. To identify reef check indicator organisms, each team should prepare at least one set of underwater identification cards. You can either purchase these at a dive store or make them yourself. As for supplies, bring a few permanent markers for waterproof writing, plenty of duct tape, your best friend, and also carry some line for attaching things and a couple of extra weights. Safety is the number one concern of reef check. All teams should have a diver down flag, a first aid kit, sunscreen, and plenty of water on hand, as well as observing all general and safety precautions of diving and boating. Given the low price of a geographic positioning system these days, we would hope that you could buy, beg, or borrow one for use during your survey. If not, please use a detailed nautical chart. Remember to write down units for your coordinates and the source. We encourage all teams to make a photographic and or video record of their site, training, surveys, and related activities, and we welcome copies. These will be useful not only as a scientific record, but also to strengthen team unity and for distribution at media and public relations events. At headquarters, we are always looking for high quality photos and video of any of these activities for use in our newsletter, on the website, and for PR. As you look back over the list of equipment, keep in mind that it is just a guide, and we encourage you to modify your personal list to best serve your needs. Site selection is done by the team scientist before the actual survey date, and volunteers may be asked to help. It is always useful to have a backup site in case local conditions, weather, or currents make the chosen site unsafe to dive. Site selection is important. The ideal target reef is shallow, exposed rather than enclosed, and has a reef crest and outer slope. The reef should have a high living coral cover, as well as dense fish and mobile invertebrate populations. Steep reef walls or drop-offs, and reefs located in caves or underhangs should be avoided. Out of all the reefs your team has access to, survey the reef least affected by human impacts, such as overfishing or pollution. If your team can survey multiple sites, choose your second reef to represent moderate human impacts, and your third to represent heavy human impacts. This will enable us to track the conditions of a cross-section of reefs. Reef check is most efficient using teams of four to six volunteers per survey. As you can see, the team leader is assigning different tasks to different people, depending on individual skills and preference. Divers must always work in buddy pairs in close visual contact. Usually, one diver lays the transect, two divers complete the fish survey, two divers complete the invertebrate survey, and one or two divers complete the substrate survey. Remember, always have a dive buddy available even if only one person is completing the survey. Reef check divers should have a medium level of experience. The team leader is responsible for assessing the capability of the divers to participate. Reef check can be carried out without scuba in shallow water, just using fins, mask, and snorkel. Each survey should be carefully planned from departure to return to the dock. Each team member should know their work assignment before they leave shore. Let's move on now to the second step, site description and transect deployment. After the team arrives on site, the team leader and a dive buddy will deploy the transect line. We recommend using a 100 meter long fiberglass measuring tape. However, if this is not available, you can easily improvise by using a rope. Simply mark the rope at meter and half meter intervals with permanent marker and tape. To secure the transect, tie the loop or bungee cord around dead coral or rock or weigh down the line with extra dive waves if the area is sandy or there is no suitable place to tie the transect line. But please remember to not damage any living corals or other organisms that might be in the area. For those of you wishing to resurvey the exact transect at a later date, permanent stakes can be installed so that the site can be located next survey. 
When choosing where to start the transect, it is important to check that there's sufficient living reef at one depth contour for the full 100 meter transect. In case there is not, or if you are surveying patch reefs, you can divide the transect into four segments. Just make sure the distance between each 20 meter segment is five meters or more. This separation is important for statistical analysis. A complete reef check survey actually consists of two surveys, one along a depth contour between two and five meters and one between six and 12 meters. Ideally, a site can be located with sufficient reef at both depths. In the case where reef exists at only one depth, then only one transect is used. While the team leader is searching and deploying the transect, the other divers can complete the site description. The site description sheet consists of 36 questions designed to tell us the environmental condition and level of human impact on your reef. We ask you to make detailed reference to the location of your reef by taking landmarks and a GPS coordinate. If you do not have access to a GPS, please use a detailed nautical chart and please tell us the units you're recording your coordinates in. We ask that you record the GPS units in degrees, minutes, and seconds. If your team is not sure of an answer, try to find out after you return to shore. Also, feel free to add information on human impacts that is not specifically requested. After the transect line is fully deployed, all divers should go over the dive plan one more time before entering the water to ensure that everyone knows what they should be doing and when. Now is the time to make sure that diver names have been written onto the correct slates along with the location, date, and time. The fish team needs to wait 15 minutes after the transect line is laid before they begin. This is to allow the fish to relax after being disturbed and resume normal behavior. Upon entering the water, the pair should swim directly to the start of the transect. It is important to swim smoothly and to use proper buoyancy control to avoid alarming the fish or touching the bottom. The first team swims along the transect line and looks for indicator fish listed in the reef check manual. Reef check surveys count indicator organisms chosen to indicate human impacts such as poison fishing, spear fishing, curio collection, and so on. Taken together, these indicators define coral reef health. For example, the number of lobsters on a reef will indicate fishing pressure. Reef check uses both global and regional indicators. The specific indicators you will be required to count will vary according to where you are performing your survey. Therefore, these will be taught to you by your team scientist in a separate photo presentation. Some of the fish will also have size specifications. Indicators have been chosen because they are very distinctive and therefore easy to identify. Your team leader will teach you each indicator, pointing out distinguishing features until you are comfortable with all identifications. During land trainings, the team scientist uses various objects to represent fish. We'll use our imagination and tally them up as we pass. The fish team swims along the transect line, counting indicator fish within each five meter wide by five meter long by five meter high cube. Therefore, you have two and a half meters on either side of the transect line. You can use two and a half meter pipes to help estimate the distance of the survey transect. During the survey underwater and on land, you can actually carry the pipe with you to help you estimate the distance. When on land, it's also helpful to mark a two and a half meter width on either side of the transect line. Remember, the height above the transect is five meters. You know the depth you will be diving, so you know how far five meters is up above the bottom. I've also found for myself that if I stretch out with these fins on, that I'm two and a half meters long, so I also use that to judge distance if I don't have a pipe available. To maximize the chance of counting reef fish, you should stop every five meters and wait three minutes for fish to come out of hiding. The fish team counts fish along the entire length of each of the four 20 meter long segments. The most effective way to survey fish is for one of the divers to survey the right side of the transect and the other to survey the left, as these volunteers are doing. Each diver is then only responsible for counting fish on one side of the transect. To do this properly, it is important to avoid double counting. Fish have a rather annoying habit of swimming across the transect. It is important that individual fish are not counted twice. This requires a degree of coordination between you and your dive buddy, and some teams use hand signals to communicate. 
Make sure you keep an eye on each other and signal when you have counted a fish that is heading towards the other side of the transect. Recording the data is simple. All you do is put a tally mark for each fish you see in the appropriate box on the data sheet. A note should be made of any sightings of rare animals, such as manta rays, sharks, or turtles. But if these are outside the transect area, they should be written at the bottom of the slate under comments. Off transect records are allowed for very rare indicators, which will be identified by your team scientist. Let's move on to the invertebrate survey. The team conducting the invertebrate survey can start when the fish team is about halfway through. The goal of this survey is to count invertebrate indicators of food or curio collection. Just like the fish survey, the most efficient method for conducting this survey is to use two divers, one on each side of the transect line. The invertebrate survey is done like the fish survey, except there are no stops. You swim slowly along each 20 meter long by 5 meter wide belt, counting the indicator species and tallying them in the correct cell on the slate. Because some of the indicator organisms are small, and some like to hide in crevices or under ogre hangs, they'll often be difficult to spot. The most effective way to find these indicators is to bring your eyes close to the bottom by swimming in the elegant face in the floor, feet in the air position. We recommend you practice riding on the slate or clipboard in this position before you start the survey. And please be careful when turning right side up so that you don't kick or damage corals. In addition to tallying up invertebrates, this team of divers is responsible for recording anchor damage, fishing nets, trash, coral bleaching, or other unusual conditions. The last survey is the substrate survey. The substrate team can start when the invertebrate team is about halfway through their survey. The substrate survey is different than the fish and invertebrate survey because rather than surveying an area two and a half meters on either side of the transect, the substrate team will record what makes up the substrate at half meter intervals underneath the transect line. Simply hold the end of the string next to the meter mark and drop the weight onto the substratum. Record what the weight lands on, swim to the next half meter mark, and repeat. Substrate survey, it can sometimes be difficult to determine what is exactly underneath each half meter point on the transect. This is especially true if the transect is lifted up above the reef and is swinging back and forth in the current. If, for example, the transect swings this way, I may record a red rock, and if the transect swings this way, I will record sand. A plumb line will help remove a bias associated with this. When he drops the weight, I know to record sand at this point. He will then lift up the weight and proceed to the next point. You should use a plumb line at every half meter interval along the transect line. There are nine categories of substrate we record for reef check. Reef check definitions are specific. Your team leader will go over every category to make sure you are certain of the differences. For example, the difference between sand and silt is defined by picking up and dropping a handful of sediment. If it is silt, it will stay in suspension. And if it is sand, it will drop immediately to the bottom. You should use the following abbreviations on your data sheet. If you enter an incorrect code in the Excel spreadsheet, it will be rejected. HC for hard coral, SC for soft coral, RKC for recently killed coral, NIA for nutrient indicator algae, SP for sponge, RC for rock, RB for rubble, SD for sand, and SI for silt or clay. Once both transects have been completed, we are ready for the last step wrap-up and data collection. Doing the survey is great fun and the post-survey party is even better, but please remember that until the data have been input and sent off to headquarters, they will not be fully utilized. The team scientist is responsible for collecting the data as soon as the dive is completed and reviewing it immediately with all team members. The team scientist will make a quick assessment of the data to determine if any errors have been made that can be corrected while the team is still on site and the transect is in place. Typical errors that could be corrected at this stage include double counting of fish and misidentification of organisms. When an error is suspected, a resurvey should be made to correct it. After deciding as a group that the data are accurate and consistent, the team scientist will transfer all original data onto the ReefCheck Excel spreadsheet and email them to ReefCheck headquarters. It's important for the team scientists to double check that all the information has been entered correctly. 
please remember to send the data within 10 days of the survey. Back at headquarters, a third check of the data will be performed. Remember, we will not be able to use any data that were not correctly recorded, transferred, and delivered to headquarters. We hope this video has provided you with useful information and wish you the best of luck with the rest of your training. Remember, there are many details we could not get to in this short video, such as the specific indicator organisms or substrate definitions you will be using in your survey. Make sure to complete your training with your team scientists before you dive so that you can collect accurate data that we can use to help stop the coral reef crisis. Thank you again for all of your hard work. Together with you, we are providing real solutions to the global coral reef crisis. I wish you the best of luck in your training and wish you a wonderful, safe diving experience with your Reef Check team.